Hi everyone, the Kinetic here. So this video is going to be uh, covering Galio's itemization and runes and summoner spells. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why I think that Spellbinder builds are the most effective and why I think Spellbinder is probably the best item on Galio. Uh, it's going to be a kind of a long video, so it's going to be a TLDR at the end. Uh, and I will have timestamps in the description as well, so you can skip to the parts that you want to hear me talk about. So let's just jump right into it. So when you're building a champion, you want to always look at the scalings and how their abilities work so you can build the best possible items. And for Galio's passive, as you can see here, uh, all of his abilities has uh, an, have an AP scaling and it's actually a, a really good AP scaling on Galio. He has really high AP ratios across the board, which means that obviously Galio should take advantage of this and build AP. But there are also other scalings in Galio's kit, and those are the most interesting ones. And the first scaling that's really interesting is his damage reduction. If you look on the right side on his W, you can see that his magic damage reduction scales with 5% per 100 AP here. Now, this scaling is really, really good. It's actually really high. This means that if you have like 800 AP, you will have an 80% damage reduction versus magic damage. And that's not even counting from magic resist. Let's say you have Merc Threats, you have Aftershock proc, and so on. So really, really huge scaling here. Now what this means is this makes Galio very tanky when he has his W. Uh, and it actually lasts for uh, up to five seconds if you hold the charge uh, fully. Which means that you can actually become very, very tanky by just the building AP. So I have made an assumption down here, as you can see. AP, in my opinion, is more valuable than armor and magic resist. And this is because AP gives you a lot of damage because of its high AP ratios, but it also gives you a lot of tankiness. Now, armor and magic resist only gives you more tankiness. We want to abuse the fact that going full AP will actually give us both now for the next assumption I've written here, it says that HP is more valuable than magic resist. And this is because that Galio gets a magic damage shield that's based on his maximum HP. And that alone is not enough uh, to warrant this assumption, but because Galio uh, gives his entire team the magic damage shield when he ults, then suddenly HP becomes very valuable against magic damage team. So if you're up against the heavy magic damage, going for more HP will give your team a better advantage compared to going MR, because that will only help you. So HP is more valuable than MR if you need something to combat magic damage champions. Now, what can we use this for? This means that we need items that are primarily focused on AP and HP. We also need to think about items that complement Galio's kit, notably his W, uh, which is an ability that slows himself when he uses it, which means we need some kind of way to make sure we can land our W, and this is exactly where Spellbinder comes in. Now, before we go into build, I would like to discuss something else, and that is the redundancy of a lot of people's builds. So this is a common problem that I see with pretty much everyone who builds Galio, is that they will... Um, they will make a lot of redundant choices. And what I mean by that is, Galio has certain things that I think is necessary for him to be as effective as possible. One, he needs some kind of movement speed up, and this is to combat the weakness of his W. If he has a movement speed up like Spellbinder, Nimbus Cloak, uh, Ghost, and so on, what that means is that his W is no longer slowing himself. He can actually catch people out with W. And this is a, allows him to be much more effective. Um, he also needs a teleport, but he already had, has one in his ult, so I don't think he needs an additional one. He needs some kind of kill pressure early that allows him to take advantage of how strong his early game can be if he gets uh, a little bit ahead. And then he needs some kind of survivability or some kind of trading potential um, because we want to maximize how effective we are in the early game. Now, a lot of people, what they will do is they will uh, stack up multiple instances of each of these uh, brackets here, but they will neglect one or two. Well, this means is a lot of people might go for teleport. They might go for, uh, uh, let's say they go for teleport and Nimbus Cloak. Uh, and this allows them to pick the Keystone uh, Aftershock, right? But then they don't have any early game kill pressure. 
Now, some people might go for, let's say they go for Predator, and they go for, um, I don't know, they go for Ignite, but then they don't have survivability, right? So, in my opinion, most builds lack one of these areas here, right? Even people who go for Electrocute, I would say Electrocute is not better than uh, Aftershock at all, but we'll get to that, even in terms of damage. Uh, but most people will always neglect usually either kill pressure or survivability, and I don't think that's effective. For me, having just one of these in each bracket is enough. Spellbinder is enough to give a movement speed up, and it's also much more reliable than Nimbus Club, but we'll get into that. We already have one teleport, and that is enough as long as you play around it and know how it works. And then you can actually use your summoner spell and keystone to get kill pressure and survivability. This allows Galio to be very efficient and very effective in the early game compared to making redundant choices so that you either lack survivability or kill pressure that makes you less efficient in the early game where you really want to be pushing an advantage. So for Galio's runes, uh, I think that Aftershock is the most effective. Um, Aftershock gives you a good mix of damage and tankiness, and because Galio's passive and his damage reduction scales with magic resist, this becomes even more effective on Galio. So Aftershock gives him quite a bit of damage, and it gives him a lot of tankiness, and also allows him to go into Resolve Tree, which is a great tree for him. Uh, there are some other options, some people like to go Electrocute, but I don't think the damage is that much better. Um, it's really not, and it doesn't give any tankiness, and it only works on one target, so it's generally not that good. Uh, Dark Harvest is kind of the same. Uh, it scales too slowly, and you don't want to play for late game scaling on Galio. You want to be effective as early as possible. Predator is the only rune I would consider taking, other than um, Aftershock, and that's because there are some matchups where you simply cannot get to fight them early. This could be something like Rise or Meltahara, where they will just push all day, and they will never fight you. And even if you, they try and fight you, you can't really get to them because they have uh, a lot of safety. So you can go for Predator here and either flank them or try to roam. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to go for uh, Shield Bash. And the reason we do that is because uh, we want the first part of it, which means while shielded, we gain a number of armor and magic resist or based on our level, uh, and this is really good because you usually have your magic damage shield up and this makes you naturally tanky on top of having Aftershock. Uh, it also gives a little bit of damage, it's a little hard to use that damage because it only appears whenever your W shield refreshes, but it's a nice bonus to have. Um, so we go for this one, we could go for Demolish, it's also viable, but I think this one makes you generally uh, stronger in early trading. Now for the next rune, I think that Second Wind is just subpar compared to Bone Plating. This is only good if you know you can take like one hit at a time every 10 seconds. Uh, because if you take more than one hit at a time, Bone Plating is almost always better. And Bone Plating also helps you in ganks and it also helps you after laning phase. And generally speaking, Second Wind is, is something that you maybe take versus Syndra. Uh, but otherwise, I would say, even versus Syntra, it's probably better to get Bone Plating, because there's a lot of instances where she will try to burst you, or the jungler will gank, and Bone Plating is just a, a really good rune for that. Now, for the last one down here, uh, I think that Overgrowth is very, very strong. Uh, Overgrowth gives you a lot of... Um, it gives you a lot of HP for free, usually between two and 300, and because, as we know, Galio scales with HP, this is great. This is just an amazing bonus that you get from essentially just last hitting or being near minions that die. And for your secondary tree, uh, some people will opt into this tree to get the minion dematerializer, but I don't think it's necessary. I think that sorcery tree is the best, and the reason for that is water walking. So water walking is an amazing rune. It gives you 25 flat movement speed in river, and that's actually the same as tier 1 boots. And like that's 300 gold extra while in river basically in the early game and that's amazing um it also gives you adaptive uh, bonus so it gives you uh, a lot of uh, power when you go for the early scuttles you're much, much faster you have much more damage generally speaking water walking is a really broken rune when you want to be roaming a lot and when you want to be rotating quickly uh i would 
pretty much always recommend getting it uh, if you can. Um, with maybe one exception, but we'll get to that. Uh, and then the next rune is a toss-up between Nullifying Orb and Transcendence. So generally speaking, I don't like Nimbus Cloak because I think that Nimbus Cloak is too unreliable and uh, actually um, Spellbinder just gives more movement speed and it has a lot lower cooldown, it's a lot more reliable. So Nimbus Cloak doesn't really do anything apart from giving you a bit of movement speed uh, every five minutes or so whenever you use Ignite or Flash. Uh, so generally speaking, as long as you have Spellbinder in your build, Nimbus Cloak is not necessary. Uh, it's just a waste. Uh, I think Nullifying Orb is really good if you're up against an AP mid and an AP jungler. If you're only up against an AP mid, I would not take it. Then I would go for Transcendence. I think 10% free CDR is uh, really good. I think it's better than getting a little bit of extra AP. Um, I generally don't prioritize CDR as much in my build as well, so getting 10% here for free is, um, is, is a decent trade. Uh, so for the shards, usually what I do is I go for the double offense, and I will go for either armor or magic resist depending on the game. Now, some people could argue that, well, didn't you say that uh, HP is better than MR? Yeah. Generally speaking, it is because of the magic and shield. But here, you get so little, uh, you get so little HP here that it's almost nothing in the grand scheme of things. Whereas this here, eight magic resist in the early game is really good, really, really good for your trading um, with your passive and getting a little more, um, a little more damage reduction on your W. So definitely go for magic resist or armor depending on the matchup. Uh, and that's basically the room page that I run, usually. Now the alternative room page I talked about is Predator, and it's very flexible. Um, I think that um, generally here you want to go for Taste of Blood if it's a really hard lane, and most of the time it's just something you're going to get pushed in. Uh, so Taste of Blood is pretty good. Uh, I also think Cheap Shot is very good, very good rune, Sudden Impact also. I would say the toss up between Cheap Shot or Taste of Blood. Uh, these two runes are the best, so if you need some kind of sustain, go for this one, and if you don't, go for this one for more kill pressure. Here, I would say Eyeball Collection, you get a lot of assists, uh, so it's good for you. And down here, you can go for Ravenous Hunter, again, if you need some sustain, you could go for like this. Uh, and if you don't, I would say go for Relentless Hunter, if you need more rotating, which is usually why you get Predator. You can go for Ultimate Hunter as well, because... Uh, and if, let's just go with uh, with this one first, because Ultimate Hunter, you want that when you don't go for Transcendence. So if you want to get like this here, you can do that and get Ultimate Hunter for the cooldown. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, you kind of want Water Walking as well. Uh, so if you don't get Water Walking, you kind of have to get Relentless Hunter, and then you lack some CDR. Uh, I would not go for Ingenious Hunter. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, you could go for the uh, lower protobel cooldown and I guess for the lower spellbinder cooldown, but spellbinder cooldown is not that important. It's more about the stacks. So, uh, But yeah, all the options are viable. You can think about what you need. Do you need more ults? Do you need more roaming? And for the secondary, you can either go for this one here or go for the standard one, which is a toss up between these two and then water walking. Uh, but generally speaking, stick to the first one. Uh, and then in a, f in a select few matchups where you just cannot fight them in lane uh, for whatever reason because they don't want to fight you, like there's no way you, you get close to them, then you can go for Predator. So for summoner spells, uh, I've talked about this a little bit before in my redundancy, but I think that Ignite is better than Teleport. I'm going to explain why here. Uh, so Ignite gives you actual kill pressure in lane. Um, and I think this is the big one. Uh, Galio without Ignite doesn't quite have the kill pressure that he needs. I think that with Ignite you have a lot of surprise burst, uh, and that extra like 152 damage or whatever is usually enough to net you kills in laning phase. Uh, one because people don't expect it, and and two because I think there's just a he just needs a little bit more damage fr from somewhere. And I think Ignite is just the best. It also counters healing champions. Uh, and, and with this kind of kill pressure early on, it allows you to be a threat um, in, the, uh, in the scuttle contest. 
and you can actually snowball the game very early on. Uh, now the cons for taking Ignite is that it gives you a lot less overall map mobility. I don't think that this really matters, but uh, let's talk about teleport. So the pros of having teleport, and I have put Nimbus Cloak there as well, because I think those two need to go together. So the pros for teleport is that it allows you to have an even greater map presence. Um, now, as I talked about, uh, I think this is a redundant choice because your ult already gives you quite a lot of map mobility and I spec heavily into movement speed as well so I can rotate really fast. Now it also allows you to get more precise wave control which is a plus uh, and also allows you to do some really fast flanks uh, with Nimbus Cloak. So it's essentially what I think of teleport is that it is a late game rune. Uh, you play that uh, if you are completely uh, unable to to get any kind of advantage in lane and you know that you won't be able to use your ignite so you can go through teleport now the cons for teleport is of course it removes your early game kill pressure it has a long cooldown until late game and it requires nimbus cloak now of course it doesn't require nimbus cloak but i think that with nimbus cloak it just becomes so much better um so generally speaking i think ignite is better in 90 percent of the games where as teleport can be better in those select few games where you might need to take Predator as well. Uh, simply because um, that teleport is, is a rune where you basically tell your opponent, okay, I'm not going to try to snowball on you early. I'm going to play uh, really slow. I'm going to only play for the map. Uh, and I don't think that's the most effective strategy. So I think that Ignite is a lot better because you don't really need TP to impact the map. But you can do it, uh, it's not unviable in certain matchups. I just think that Ignite generally is better because if you don't go for Ignite, you lose that kill pressure. So for starting items, I like to go Dorn's Ring. I think it's the best starting item for Galio. It gives you every stat you want, AP, HP, and some passive mana region, which is always nice. Uh, the plus 15 AP allows you to clear cast the minions at level 4 with Q passive. This is really huge. Um, not going for Doran's Ring uh, makes it so that you can clear quite as fast. Like doing that Q passive at level 4 is very, very good for getting early prior, getting uh, to scuttle fights earlier or roaming early. So definitely uh, would recommend going for Doran's Ring uh, as much as possible. It also gives you more kill pressure than the alternative, uh, obviously because it has 15 AP. Uh, and I think there's only one alternative, really, uh, and that is Dorn's Shield. Uh, because if you cannot start Dorn's Ring, it's because you're in a matchup where you will be poked out early, and your only goal is to get to 1,100 1, gold so you can get your boots and survive. Uh, so, yeah, generally used against champions like uh, Corky or Lucian that attack you a lot, or LeBlanc will auto attack you a lot, as well as Syndra, uh, and other lane bullies, you can use it. Now, you don't necessarily need to use it every time. I don't always get Dorn Shield versus Syndra uh, or Victor, uh, but sometimes I do. Um, again, it's, a, it's kind of a toss up because versus Victor, you would actually like to have the Q passive level 4. Um, so, it kind of depends on. How much do you think you're going to get poked out in this lane? What do you what do you think is going to happen? If the jungler is going to gank you a lot, it's also pretty good to be high HP, which you will be with Doran's shield. Um. <clears throat> so, I always go for boots first item, and this is because I think that um, it allows you to get a lot of really fast roams when you have water walking, and it's also because Mercs just synergizes so well with Galio's kit. Uh, it's it's such a perfect item on him. Uh, I also think the Sorcerer's Shoes is really good, but generally speaking, you get it because you want to be roaming really fast through river so you can get into alt range, or roaming really fast so that you can um, so you can gank bot uh, on foot as well. Uh, so always, if I have 1,100 gold, I will back and I will get boots. So which boots do I get? I think about 70% of the time I get Merc Threats. It might even be higher sometimes, but generally speaking, Mercs is a perfect item for Galio. Um, once you have Mercs, champions such as LeBlanc, Zoe, Syndra, they can't hurt you anymore. It's uh, They can't CC you for very long. They can't do any damage to you uh, because of your MR and your magic damage shield. 
And generally speaking, like there's always a CC, like a person with CC on the enemy team, and getting mercs is a perfect candle to that. You don't want to be CC'd as much when you're Galio because you are in melee range and you have to position correctly to play him correctly. Now, I will get source of shoes when I'm up against an AD champion that cannot threaten me early on. This is something like Kiana. Uh, I will also get it versus Talon. And I'll also get it against uh, AP champions with no CC that I need to kill uh, early so that they don't uh, snowball. So I think that something like Vladimir is the big one um, where I will get it because he doesn't have CC. But even then, if, if the team, if the enemy team has more CC, uh, I think it's still worth to go for Merc Threats if you're up against something like Vladimir. Now, 5% of the time, and this is usually only versus heavy AD champions like Yasu and Lucian who can kill me early on, I will go for Tabis. I don't think Tabis is the most effective um, item for Galio, but it does help with those two matchups specifically. For the last item I've put here is Boots of Swiftness. I think Boots of Swiftness is kind of underrated. It gives a lot of movement speed compared to the other tier 2 boots. Uh, and it uh, gives you slow resistance, which uh, actually reduces the slow on your W, so you're even faster. Um, I think it might work versus certain really slow heavy comps. I'm not sure because I haven't tested it. But uh, I would just put it there so that you guys know that I don't think it's completely unviable. I just haven't tested it enough. I, don't, I didn't have a game where I thought that it was the best option. But definitely don't think it's unviable, so you can experiment with it if you want to. Now for my first item, I will pretty much always go for Hextech Protobelt. And the reason for that is that it's a very cost efficient item. You get a lot of stats for a relatively low cost. You get health and AP, which is the two stats that Galio really want. You get some free CDR, which is nice. It's a nice bonus. And then I get it a lot because of the active. I think the active is just great on Galio. It allows him to do some uh, really high damage combos, uh, and it gives you a lot of a fast wave clear as well. Uh, so definitely a great all-round item for a very cheap price. Uh, I usually start getting the components after boots, unless I back with less than 1,000 gold. I will start getting maybe some amp tomes, and then I think that Hectic Revolver is is better to rush than Kill Gem in most matchups. Uh, once you have it, uh, you have a really big power spike because with Hextech Protobelt and Ignite, you can kill people really easily, at least squishy people. So now we arrive at the second item, and this is where we're going to talk about Spellbinder. So I have, uh, I've seen a lot of people experiment with a lot of different second items. People go for Luden second, people go for um, Morello second, and some people go for Sonya second. But I think that Spellbinder is the most effective. And I have compared it here with Luden's Echo to just look at why I think this item is better. Uh, and we're going to just start from the beginning here. So Spellbinder's active removes Galio's main weakness. And this is really huge, right? So this means that on top of everything else that the item does for you, it actually removes your main weakness. It gives you some movement speed up, up to 50% bonus movement speed, which is... Uh, more than Nimbus Cloak, and I believe more than Ghost as well. So it's a very powerful ability uh, to have in your kit. Uh, if we just look at the stats of the items compared to something like Ludens, it gives more AP. So it gives 120 flat AP, which is a lot, and then gives you up to 80 when you activate uh, the active. And that is really huge. That's up to 200 AP in total, which is 110 AP more than Ludens Echo really heavy on AP, right? I think also that passive movement speed is just broken. 10% movement speed passively at all times means that you rotate a lot faster. Uh, and it's generally undervalued how good movement speed is. And also, Spellbinder is cheaper. I think it's uh, the same cost as Sonya's and a bit cheaper than Morello's as well. Uh, so definitely a great item uh, all around in, in terms of cost efficiency. And I think that it has very strong all-in burst, again, with the 80% bonus AP that, that comes with it and the movement speed. So overall, a really, really strong item compared to Ludens because it has so much more damage in it. So, But you might look at this and say, okay, well, but what about the other things on Ludens? So there are some cons to this. 
the main one is that you don't get 20% CDR from Ludens. Now, I know a lot of people like having a lot of CDR. I don't think that it's uh, the biggest issue in the world. I think that all the pros of Spellbinder just completely outvalues what 20% CDR will give you. Because in most fights, what happens is you go in, you unload your entire combo, and then you have you don't have anything else, right? You Your abilities have quite long cooldowns, and the fight will be over even with 40% CDR before you can unload another rotation most of the time. So I don't think 20% CDR is uh, the biggest difference in the world. Now, another uh, con is that Ludens gives you some more Q-Poke because of the passive um, from... Uh, like Luton's Echo. And I don't think that this really matters because on two items, you really don't want to be doing poke wars. You want to be farming for your third item. So I don't think it matters that much. And lastly, it's Spellbinder doesn't have any mana. And I know a lot of people think that Galio is mana hungry. Generally speaking, if you have Dorn's Ring and you just back at the correct times, you will never have mana problems. I almost never have any mana problems and I don't buy any mana on Galio at all. So I think this is uh, this is more of a wave management issue than it is an item issue. So overall, it is cheaper, it is stronger in terms of damage, it removes one of Galio's main weaknesses, and it gives you a lot of power in rotations. This item is just superior to all other second items because of how much it gives you for such a low price. So I would say Spellbinder, there's only one situation where you would not get it second um there are a couple actually one is if they have a lot of healing and they have a lot of engage which means something like a cane or cane silas and you you don't have to go and and kill the enemy team you just have to peel for your carries and then you could go for morello second to just sit on your carry and reduce everyone's healing uh, another situation could be if you have 25 stacks in your metias you want to go for rabadon's second item I mean, I guess third because Metias counts uh, because of how much AP that will give you. But I think at 98% of the games, you will go for Spellbinder second just because of how good the item is. So I just want to briefly talk about Metias Soul Stealer. Um, it, uh, it's a really good item on Galio in a lot of games uh, because it's a cheap source of AP and Galio scales heavily with AP. It builds out of an early Dark Seal, and that's an item I get a lot if I have some spare gold. Uh, I think it's very easy to rack up stacks with your ult as well, so your seal will stack a lot early on when you roam. Uh, and I think a big part of it is also that it gives 10% bonus movement speed. Now, 10% bonus movement speed is really strong. I, uh, I value movement speed very highly, so definitely a plus. Um, it also allows you to snowball games really hard, and you don't want to go late when you play Galio if you can avoid it. Uh, and if you're positioned correctly, you're very hard to kill. Again, remember, Galio scales with AP, but not only his damage, his tankiness as well. So by getting, let's let's say, 120 AP from Medjais, then suddenly you're not only very strong, but you're also very tanky. So for Galio, uh, it's a lot less uh, risky to go Medjais because of how tanky you get with all the AP. Now, the negatives is that it delays your build. It usually delays your Spellbinder. Uh, this is generally okay because you get a lot of AP, but Spellbinder is such a core item and such a big power spike that once you get it, uh, you become so much more powerful. So definitely keep it in mind that you're going to be 1400 gold down. So you have to make use of the Medjai's investment. And then it is, at its core, a high-risk, high-reward item. I think for Galio, it's more like a moderate-risk, high-reward. Uh, but still, there are some games where you don't want to get it. Something like a heavy CC comp on the enemy team, you don't want to get it. Or if the enemy team has uh, some tank busters like Vayne or Kog'Maw, of course, you don't want to get it. Um, and also, if you're not ahead, obviously, you don't want to get it. But if you're ahead and the enemy team doesn't have a Vayne or Kog'Maw and they don't have like that much CC, this item is usually always a good purchase. Now we get to the rest of the build, and usually uh, when you have your boots and you have your Hextech Protobel and you have your Spellbinder, you will look for some kind of situational items to uh, fill out your build. And I've listed some of the items here. I think that in the top row we have the viable AP items, those that you can use to fill in your build. Some are better than others, and we're going to talk about that in the next uh, segment. In the next uh, row, we have 
all the viable tank, tank items. Now I did forget a uh, gargoyle stone plate. I think it's also pretty good in some situations. Uh, but generally speaking, I don't think that tank items are viable on Galio uh, that often. I think there's only one scenario in which you can afford to go for tank items. We're going to discuss that in the build section. Uh, because generally speaking, as I mentioned, AP is more valuable than armor and magic resist, and HP is more valuable than MR. And usually AP items does give HP as well, something like Leandris and Morello, so I don't think that you should opt for getting, let's say, a Warmox armor, um, because you can get both HP and AP from some of the other items. But again, there's one scenario where I think tank is viable, we'll get to that. Now the important part is the non-viable AP items. Uh, First of all, I think that Galio needs to maximize his efficiency as early as possible. This means that going for a scaling item like Seraph's Embrace is not worth it. Uh, you don't have any mana issues either, so there's really no reason you should go for this one over something like Ludens if you really want a Lost Chapter item. Um, I also think that um, I think that Rylai's is nonsensical. There's no way you, you would ever use it because all of your builds have, have CC until... On... Rylize is also a nonsensical item because I think that there's no way you will use it. All of your abilities has some kind of CC except your Q, uh, which is like 20% slow on a Q. It's really not worth it. If you want HP and AP, you can go for something like Morello or Leandris and you will get some really incredible passives that are just much better. Um... And I think Rod of Ages is kind of the big one. I know a lot of people like Rod of Ages. I know a lot of people will rush it first, but I think that my issue with Rod of Ages compared to Hextech Protopill, because that's really what we're doing. They cost pretty much the same. Uh, their stats are pretty much identical, except that uh, Rod of Ages, once you complete it, gives you mana, whereas, um, and the eternity passive, whereas Hextech Protopill gives you CDR and the rocket passive. And I think that, first of all, Rod of Ages has a worse build path. I don't think you really need the mana. I don't think you need the Eternity passive. Um, it doesn't give the uh, the free CDR. It doesn't give that really powerful active uh, that Spellbinder has. And because Rod of Ages is worse than Spellbinder, then it is not viable. Because you, ca you cannot build Rod of Ages as a second item or a third item. You have to build it as a first item in order to get some efficiency out of it. And as Galio, you want to be as strong as early as possible, which means that going for Rod of Ages is just not optimal. Again, it's worse than Protobelt, and therefore we cannot build it, because we have to build Rod of Ages first if we want to build it. I've made some example builds, uh, some example completed builds, and let's just go through them. So generally speaking, I always think that you need Merc Treads, and then you need your Protobelt and your Spellbind. Those are your core items. and the build that I do most often these days is Rabadon's third, because having Spellbinder means you have so much AP that Rabadon's will make you a lot stronger than everyone else on three items. So it's a gigantic power spike, and if you farm well, uh, this is definitely doable quite early in the game. Uh, and getting that Rabadon's will just make you snowball out of control and end the game in the mid game. Uh, so. After that, you can go for something like a Morello versus healing teams, or Leandris versus non-healing teams, and then you can finish off with usually a Banshees, but you can also do a Sonya's uh, or a Void Staff, depending on if you need some kind of stall or some kind of tank busting. Now for the second build, that's what you want to do versus tanky teams. You want to get the Leandris. Uh, of course, if they have healing, you can't really go for uh, Leandris like that. Then you might go for like Morello and then Leandris. Uh, and then you want to go Death Cap because I always think that Death Cap is a really, really good item. And then Void Staff in the end to shred the EMR. Um, the third build is kind of flexible. It's something that I do a lot versus uh, heavy healing comps or comps where you really need the uh, magic damage shield on your ult. Something like versus Katarina. This is really good because it reduces her Conqueror healing, her Gunblade healing. And it also gives your team more magic damage shield because of the HP from Morello. Now, there are some comps where you might actually do Morello before Spellbinder, and these are only versus something like if the enemy team has Kane, Aatrox, and Silas, and they always die for your AD carry, then you can get the Morello to just peel and reduce healing early, because you don't need to catch anyone. But generally speaking, this is good versus healing teams, and you should stick to the first three core items here. 
So example tank build, and a lot of you might say that this is not a tank build, and I would disagree. So with Galio, because of how his scalings work, you cannot neglect AP. I think that getting Protobelt is the best early game item you can get, and Spellbinder is a core item that just negates the weakness of his W. It's just a fantastic item. And then if a certain scenario, uh, if a certain condition is met, basically, then you can go for something like two tank items or maybe three, but usually I would finish up by getting a Leandris because that scales really well into the late game. So what is this condition? Now the condition is that if your team has a reliable AP damage dealer, let's say you have a Cassiopeia or a Rise top lane or a Kale or something, and your team has no tank, but they really need a front line, someone that can go into the front line and be there for extended periods of time, longer than five seconds, so you, you can't really rely on your W uh, reduction to just do the work for you. Then you can go for tanky items. And I think that the best items are usually Frozen Heart and Adaptive Helmet versus AD and AP respectively. Of course, if you get full AD, you can go for double armor and so with MR as well. Uh, and generally speaking, you will have either a Leandris or a Metia Soul Stealer as your finishing item. Uh, it kind of depends on the game. Uh, you could also add a third tank item, but that's up to you. These builds are just examples. You can make your own builds with some of the situational items. I just think that these are the most common builds that I use. So go and try them out and get used to having Spellbinding your build and you will definitely see some kind of success. So I've included Trinket as well and there's also a pink ward here and that's because I think that for Galio you need a lot of vision control. I think that Sweeper is the best Trinket for Galio because it allows you to get a lot of vision control in River early on. It allows you to flank and ambush opponents from brushes or through jungle paths. It also ensures that, again, you can roam effectively, so you don't get spotted by wars early. And I also think that Vision Denial is just OP in a solo queue environment. And this goes tr through all ELOs. If you know how to uh, contest Vision and have proper Vision Denial, you will win more games than you lose. So, uh, pink wards are very important. Probably one of the best items in the game. Keep buying them. Get your sweeper as early as possible uh, once you start roaming and you will see an improvement in, in how effectively you can roam. Now I'm going to release a video on how to roam effectively as well, uh, so stay tuned for that. But until then, just remember to use your sweeper and pink wars uh, liberally in the river so you can clear your path and you can roam properly. So for a TLDR, we want to go starting items, we want to go Doran's uh, ring most of the time and in very hard matchups we can go for Doran's shield. For our build, we want to get some kind of tier 2 boots as our first item, usually Merc Treads, but other uh, boots can be used uh, in different situations. Then we want Hextech Protobelt and Spellbinder as our core. Usually we go for Deathcap 3rd, then either Morello or Leandris, depending on if they have healing or not. And then you finish with a situational item, depending on what you need in that specific game. For trinkets, you want to always get the red trinket as soon as possible, and you want to make sure you get a lot of pink wards so you can deny vision and create opportunities for your team. Metis is a good purchase if you're ahead and they don't have CC or tank buster, so definitely keep it in mind if you get an early dark seal. Now for summoner spells, you should always go ignite. There are maybe a few situations where teleport is viable, but those situations are far and few between. I discuss it more in depth in the video. And for the rune setup, most of the time, again, there are some exceptions, but most of the time you want to go for Aftershock, Shield Bash, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, and then in the Sorcery Tree you want to go for Always Water Walking, and then you want to go either Transcendence or Nullifying Orb, depending on the matchup. For Shards, go for Double Offensive Shards, and then go Armor or Magic Resist, depending on the matchup. So this is uh, what I have for you guys this time around. If you have any questions about the build or anything you uh, wanted me to discuss but I didn't mention, shoot it in the comments below. I will try to answer as much as possible. Uh, but until then, uh, go try this build out. I think it's the most effective one. And once you get used to using your Spellbinder uh, when you use your W, it's just, uh, it, you can just never go back. So. This is all for this video, and I'll see you guys in another informative video or another gameplay commentary. So stay tuned. Bye. Oh, that sounded. <laughs>